Hello everyone. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to safely change over your summer tires to winter tires. I mean you could also use this video to change your winter tires over to your summer tires, vice versa. So I'm going to be performing this on a 2019 Honda Odyssey. Uh, quite a big vehicle. Uh, the wheels are aftermarket for my summer. My winter tires are uh, on rims already and they are OEM spec rims so they are uh, direct fit these are aftermarket rims they are basically a direct fit as well um, but uh, there's just hub rings that I need to take off of these so I will detail everything out for now I want to show you what I use to take the tires off safely so this is all the tools that you basically will need. So right here, I have my OEM set of Honda lug nuts and the wheel key. We'll be using those for my winter tires. I have an aftermarket set of lug nuts on the car right now for my aftermarket wheels. Um, the other thing we'll be using is a basic pressure gauge to fill the tires after and make sure that they're up to pressure. This is a tread depth gauge. I'll be showing you how to use that. So basically, stick it all the way down, push it into the tread and it measures how deep your tread is. That's gonna be very key on these front wheel drive vehicles because you expect the front tires to wear out a lot faster than the rear tires because the rear aren't drive tires it is the front so you're going to need a impact socket to take the uh, lug nuts out or off the car for this car it's uh, 22 mil for your car it may be different so double check mostly smaller vehicles use about a 19 mil socket so if you get anything between an 18 and a 24 millimeter uh, socket you should be good This is my aftermarket key to take my aftermarket sockets out Lug nuts out as you can see there uh, I like to use a wire brush on my hub after I take off my wheel so that I can clear any rust off of the inside of the hub you see there's maybe a little bit there. Uh, it just helps clean things up, make sure that they come off free and then I'm getting proper torque values. So this is my torque wrench, you can see. This is the key element to the whole thing. You can get away with not using an impact gun. You cannot get away with not properly torquing on your lug nuts. This is a key thing. You can get away with not using this, obviously you can use a wire brush and hand do it, or you can just leave it the rust all together. Not necessary. This is a must. Um, obviously you can take your tires off with your emergency jack and everything, and you can change your tires over fine. I'm using tools that are just suited for making the job done faster. Um, so I use a, uh, a floor jack, basically. It is a three ton floor jack, floor jack. Uh, and it is a higher lift, so it's good for lifting up this vehicle, which is a bit bigger, higher travel. And then I use a, full, a three ton axle stand as well. And that I'll just be doing for safety. Uh, so that if my floor jack does give way unexpectedly, at least I have that there to catch the vehicle. And then on top of that, um, if you do have an issue with corrosion, I like to use a little bit of copper anti-seize on the back of the rim. And that will just make sure that the rim is not getting stuck to the hub and that you'll be all good for getting the wheels off easily from time to time. So, with that being said, 
these are basically all the tools that we'll need. Uh, for me, I use an air impact, so obviously I have an air compressor and an air line. But like I said, you can use your um, emergency stand and uh, your wheel wrench for your emergency kit in your car to take any wheel off your car, period. So you don't need to have these fancy tools. What you do need to have that I highly recommend is this torque wrench. And this is a half inch drive torque wrench. And this car will go up to about 94, 94 foot pounds of torque. So you'll want a torque wrench that goes to about 120 or so foot pounds just to give you some extra leeway in, this, in case you have a different car, but nothing that I've worked on goes over 100 foot pounds. And I also have a smaller Subaru car and the torque on that car is 89 foot pounds for the lug nuts. So without that, I'm going to be getting this tire off and putting my winter tires on and I will show you how to now properly uh, measure your tires to put them on the proper axle and proper positioning because like I said this is a front wheel drive car and this is probably the most important step so what I have here is my winter tires lined up in my bags and my bags have the indication of where the tires came off. So you see the green. So this would be a rear right side tire. This is a front right side tire. And then obviously this is a rear driver's side tire and a front driver's side tire. So I'll take the bags off and I'll use my tread depth gauge now to measure the depth of these front and back. And I want to have the highest depth, so the highest number that comes on the gauge on the front of the car, and then the lowest depth on the rear of the car, because those are my drive tires. I want the most traction, the most grip up front. And I want the least depth in the back. Either way, they're gonna give me good stopping ability, but I want to be able to also move forward safely. So that's why you wanna put the highest traction, uh, the highest tread up front. And also, these are your steering tires, so also a good thing. So I'm gonna take these bags off, and then I'll keep in mind that front, rear, front, rear, for now, until I measure the tread depth. Okay, these are my front and rear tire. Um, I'm going to measure the tread depth to make sure that this indeed is my front tire. So you can see I use a studded winter tire and this is a OEM Acura MDX rim that's going to go on. Uh, you can see that the tread points up, up, so you can see kind of an arrow going towards this direction. Most winter tires are like this. It's called a uh, directional winter tire. Um, and it's very important to properly put them facing the front of the car. So a lot of people don't notice this or don't do this. So pointing it towards the front of the car, that gives you optimal traction for stopping and for obviously going because that's how the tires are designed. If you don't know, if you do have it or not, the directional form, you can see there's also a indicator here saying rotation with an arrow beside there, indicating what, what way the tire should be facing. So rotation, hope that's viewable. There, rotation, forward. So with that, I'm going to measure the tread depth on this and I'm going to use my gauge. So in here there is the, and I hope it can focus, 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 focus. 
Anyway, there's a 30 seconds gauge on here, and there is a millimeters gauge on here. I tend to use the 30 seconds. Most tire shops use the 30 seconds as well. So, with that being said, let's do this. You want to push this top piece all the way down so that that is out. You want to find a center groove of the tire that doesn't have any uh, any high points like this here. So we'll be kind of in this area. You're going to want to put this down and then obviously this plastic black piece will want to sit flush on top of the tread without hitting a stud. So I just push it down like that. It shows me now that my tire is roughly 12 30 seconds just under 12 30 seconds and you do that just by finding the little dash mark that lines up with the metal part of the uh, of the gauge and I'm literally bang on 12 30 seconds there see it's too low for a 13 30 seconds there and it's too high for an 11 30 seconds because I cannot see the dash but it's right on the 12 30 seconds I hope this camera is focusing on that for you so uh, you can do it again multiple times in multiple locations so push this all the way down stick it in make sure it's obstruction free push it down hold bring it out and again same measurement 12 you can do that across various parts, but I always try to stay within the center profile of the tire just to make sure that I'm uh, focusing on there. So I'll go to my rear tire here. So this I would expect to be a little bit higher because I was running this tire on the rear last year. So I will do that. And it is a little bit higher, so this is basically a brand new tire at a perfect 12, 30 seconds. That other one was maybe a little bit lower. Um, I mean, this is like literally, uh, yeah, this is bang on 12, 30 seconds. That one's just a tiny bit lower, but this is like splitting hairs, right? If you've left these tires on the front for a long time and these ones on the rear for a long time, maybe you'd see like a one thirty second difference or something. There'll be a, a much noticeable difference. But I remove these tires obviously when I come out of winter and into summer right away. So now that I know that this tire is a little bit higher, I'm gonna throw this on the front and I'm gonna make sure that that one goes on the rear. And you notice my direction goes forward like this and the outside of the wheels like this so I know that that is going to go on the passenger side of my car and this is my front tire so that is going to go there so I'm going to lay this down beside the front of my car so that I know that that goes there. This again facing forward outside of the wheel and I know that it had a little bit lower of tread so I'm going to be putting that on the rear of my car. So I'm going to go get things lined up and then I'll take you for putting the actual tires on. Okay so I'm ready to lift the vehicle. The worrisome part now is where do I lift? If you don't know um, there is always an OEM dedicated lifting point for these vehicles and it's quite easy to see where so I'll put my light under there and show you so if I'm looking under the car you'll see that there's flat plastic everywhere except for right here and look there's a nice lip that comes off the car here that is your jacking point you're gonna want to have your lift put on that point and you're going to want to center this 
So you're gonna want that piece in here, perfectly center, to be able to lift the car safely. Um, another point that you can jack off is finding the actual frame. So you'll see if I go in just a little bit more, you'll see there is the frame right here and there's a bunch of stuff bolted up to it. So this is a good checking point as well. Um, but it's very convenient and easy to use this. This is also the rocker guard lip. So you can jack off of this, but this is just a convenient lip that they use to uh, also have the OEM jack jack off of. So either point is very safe. So for that, I will try to get you down there so that you can see me lift the car. See how I point it right in the middle, slowly lift up, give it a little wiggle, make sure that it's on safely, and then I begin to lift. And you'll see now that I am lifting the vehicle. Now, you don't need the tire completely off and up in the air a million feet. All you need is the tire to be basically just off the ground. So, if you can see under, it's good enough. That's all you need. And like I mentioned before, having a safety jack stand in there is also a good thing in case this guy were to fail, you got this. And to do so, you're going to want to position it roughly where that rocker guard is. And mine has a little safety latch. But, there. So I have that guy placed nicely like that. Give you guys some more light. That is placed nicely like that. And I know that it's right under the rocker guard area there. So I know that that will be a safe position. So, I like to use this setup and go tire by tire. Um, it's been a long process of explaining it to you guys, but this is how I do it. Okay, so I'm obviously using my impact wrench and my 22 mil socket. So I'll be taking those off with my uh, adapter key. You may not have an adapter key. These are aftermarket wheels, so I do have an adapter key. If you have OEM wheels, you will have your lug nuts looking like an acorn, basically, and that will fit directly into the impact socket itself. Um, so, let's get this off. So I want to put my impact into a reverse location and stick that on, make sure that it's seated in the lug nut properly and give her. Boom, one is off. I like to keep them down on the side, make sure you don't lose them. The last one came off the tire kind of Spun from the bottom, great. We know it's unlatched from the hub. And all I would do now is pull the tire and the wheel off. Like so. Take 
this out and put it and rest it on the side. So now you'll see that I do have a little bit of, of corrosion here. So this is what I will want to wire brush and clean up. And then I will put on my OEM. A hub centric ring. So for aftermarket rims, they need to adapt to the OEM size of this hub. You notice this lip. So they need, they're usually a lot thicker to adapt to any wheel. So a lot of manufacturers uh, will put a or a lot of aftermarket rims will require a hub centric ring to make sure that the rim, the center bore of the rim will adapt to the center position of the hub for the vehicle. So this is my aftermarket hub centric ring. came off so now what I'm going to do is take my wire wheel and my safety glasses and clean this off there we go so that is all nice and cleaned up I'm seeing I missed just the there. Okay, so that's all cleaned up. Let's take this off so it doesn't redo that. And then I will put my OEM tire back on with my studded winter tires. So you guys back a little bit here is my tire I will want to have two or three nuts available right away if these tires are too heavy for you again what I like to do is get my legs on either end of the tire bring the tire up to it and then I will literally squeeze the tire with my leg and lift it so, arms down, lift it up, and I'll lift it onto the lug nuts like that, and make sure you give it a push so that it's in properly, and then I like to put all of these on by hand. Um, mine does have a key nut, so I have a special key for that one. I'll make sure that all five are on. Now what I like to do is get these tightened on but I don't want them to be on so tight that they're over torqued. The torque is the very important part about making sure that these are good and on properly. So what I would do now is if you're more experienced you can use this to tighten them on but you want to make sure that you're not torquing the nuts on to the wheel uh, because if you do that you risk over torquing, you risk uh, causing strain to the, the entire suspension component, the hub, you could potentially strip out your uh, studs and then you're in for a bigger problem. So in order to make this safe for you, just do this. You don't have to use the wrench. Do it until it's snug and do that with all four. Using the impact wrench is just a way of being fast, but I only want that to be used if you're experienced enough to properly use it. So. 
just go and do all these to be hand tight. There's no harm in that. And the car can be put on the ground with them hand tightened. The car can even be put on the ground with three of these lug nuts on. So you'll see I'm using my special wheel key there. So I'll just go around and make sure that these are snug still. One, two, three. Okay, like I mentioned before, uh, the camera died on me. So just hand tighten these on, all five of them. They're on snug by hand. That's all you need, really. This tire is not gonna go anywhere. There's five lugs on there that are hand tightened. That's good. This tire will stay on when I have the car down with just three of these on. So we're safe to put it on the ground with only three lug nuts on. If you're gonna drive, I obviously recommend having all of them on. Three on the ground. Now, basically, I can put the car on the ground and then I can move on to my other tire up front and do that. So, with that being said, let's take our axle stand out. And I will, the key here is slowly lower the car. So I will twist this and slowly lower the car down. And like that, the car is down, the wheel is on. Um, for the purpose of this video, what the heck, I'll torque it. So, my torque wrench is already set at 90, so what I want to do is take that to my setting of 94. Four, and I will double confirm every vehicle has their own torque spec so I highly recommend just searching on the internet for your torque spec um, So my Honda Odyssey 94 foot-pounds from 05 to 2020 Odyssey Ridgeline 94 foot-pounds. Boom. Okay, so I will set that to 94 and it is. And I will stick my lug nut on there and let's torque away. What I like to have so what I like to also use is a tiny extension on my torque wrench and what that does is it just gives me a little bit of space away from my rim so that my torque wrench won't scratch my rim or my hand won't be hitting the side of the car like this. So the key here is torquing and you want to torque it properly. So what I like to do, start from the bottom, you're going to go in a star pattern. So you're going to start here and you're going to go directly across here and then you're going to go directly across again here and then you're going to go directly across again here and then you're going to go directly across again here. That's going to make sure that there's an even distribution all the way around of the weight of this torque into the hub. That's going to help with uh, not having your brakes be uh, misaligned or anything. It's going to make sure that you're torqued on properly and that your tire isn't going to be flying down the road on the highway because you had these nuts higher and somehow once you got to this, once you came around this way, this one's super loose or these loosened up because the wheel was cocked 
somehow. So doing the star position is what I recommend and what all the professionals use. Sorry, I did that wrong. Okay, so like that, I'll torque this on and then you wait for the click. Good. Now I'll give it one more. Boom. And I'll come up. Give it another click. Boom. Over to the other one. So if your lug nuts were to not have that play and it were to click right away, as soon as you put it on, that means that your lug nut is most likely over torqued and you should loosen it up a bit and try to retorque it properly. So you see I push down, look at stuff, it clicked, great. Boom. And over to this one. Nice. And then just for extra good measure, I'll go around and I will hit all of them one more time in the same pattern. Just in case they loosen up. Oh, okay. So that's it. You just changed one tire. Great. Now, go do that with all four. And I promise you, it is the exact same thing on each tire on basically every car. The only real difference is the lug nuts that you use and uh, sometimes the jacking points. But for majority, everything looks the same underneath. All the jacking points are relatively the same and go from there. So I'll set you guys up here and I will do this one and you guys can watch me.
so tires are on they're torqued last step for finishing up the install process is setting your tire pressure so where is my tire pressure and how do I know what to fill it up well open up your inside door and and you'll see this tire and loading information seating capacity so it come it shows you your OEM tire size so here for this car 23555 R19s and it recommends a 36 psi in the front and 36 psi in the rear and that is cold tire pressure so you'll see front rear are both sized this 36 in the front 36 psi in the rear your spare tire it's showing you is 60 psi 60 for the spare and that is this type of spare that well well if you're approaching winter it's always good to fill up that and make sure that that spare tire is full to 60 psi remove the cap Check the pressure. Right now I'm at 33. So let's build it up. Check it. 34.5. Keep going. So I'm at 36.5. So I just want to basically be pushing this now. Since it's above 36, I'll push it all the way down to about 36 and a half. But since I know that the outside is going to be colder and if we drive and park in a parking lot and it's minus 20 out and my garage here is heated, it's plus 12, plus 15 in the garage here, I'm gonna want to fill this pressure up a little bit higher. So I tend to lean to go one and a half PSI higher because it is hotter here and then when I go outside and get in the cold my tires will deflate a little bit so I will actually take this to 37.5 all around a lot of you are probably well looking at this video because you thought you would pay somebody to do it but hey I could save the money and do it myself it's very simple. You can do it literally with your emergency car jack and it won't be as fast, but you can get the job done. All I recommend obviously is just having a torque wrench so that you can get the nuts on properly and that's it. If you have your winter tires and you have OEM rims already, you can literally use the same lug nuts to get this job done. It'll take you and cost you nothing more and hey, doing this job it's a hundred dollars every time you put the tires on and then a hundred dollars once you take them off to put your summers back on so that's two hundred dollars every year the cost of these tools is no more than a hundred bucks and even cheaper if you find them on sale and even less if you use the car jack i'll link some of the torque guns that i have there is a corded one a wireless one and then you don't need an air compressor but I have an air compressor one but obviously you'll want air or some way to be able to inflate your tires after but guys that's pretty much it uh, I'll link all the tools that I used in the description down below and I hope you guys found this interesting I hope you guys found it helpful and I hope it gives you the courage to be able to do it yourself and literally this is exactly what any dealer or uh, tire shop would do for your car. I used to work at Cal Tire and this is exact procedure that they would use for everything. Obviously um, if you're having issues or vibration you'd want to take your cut tires in. Maybe you need to rebalance. Maybe there's something else wrong. Um, but like that I said tires are torqued on tires are filled up properly to the proper specified pressure you're good to go 
So thanks guys. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up, like it, and if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to my channel. I have a lot of car content, a lot of DIY at home stuff uh, to do for your vehicles, and thank you very much for watching.